All right, guys, hopefully you're staying well out there. Now, this is me going to talk to you a bit about mixing the paint to um, do your value steps like you did with the black and white version with the grays. I'm not going to draw all the boxes out. You could do if you wanted to, and that would be absolutely fine. But like I did last time, I talked to you about in class already cutting out the squares and pasting them to each other. That's what I'm going to kind of take that sort of methodology. But I'm going to try to do them somewhat in order. That way we can get something that sort of makes a lot of sense. So in the illustrations in the slideshow, in the middle of the whole thing is the pure color. Right? So the pure color. And then you want to go towards white and towards black. So it's just like you did with the... Um, just like you did with the value scale in the black and white, you're going to want to try to take what I'm going to take a little bit of my red paint and add some black to it and see what I get. And I barely added even any black to it. And it got really dark really quickly. And it almost became a brown because the black and the red make a brown. Um, because it's got an orangishness in this red, or an orange and black make brown. So that's going to be way down there towards the black side, because it's making a brown. That's almost to black. And then if I added a little bit more black to it, you know, I'm getting all the way to it. Be a little systematic about it. with my palette knife. And we'll be, there it is, almost a really, really deep, dark, raw umber brown right before black. It looks like black compared to that light brown, but it's not quite black if you put black next to it. So now that I see this, I'm like, oh, there, this one would actually have to move up here so I need to make another one that's a little bit, quite a bit in between, obviously, right? So I have that one already. I have this one. I'm going to try to mix in between there. It's going to be the same process like the other one. Taking and putting paint together. Seeing what I can get. And I go, okay, that's still really dark. Hopefully you can see this. Sorry, it's not the best setup in the world. There's a limited amount of audiovisual equipment out there in this in the world these days. Because of this whole finagling craziness. So that's starting to get there a little bit better. So I'm gonna put that down. Yeah, and you can see that okay. That's looking pretty nice actually. So that's like almost black. This one will be over there. Then there's this one. There's probably one in between those as well that I could make. So you understand how I'm doing this when I'm doing it? I should be painting out um, bigger swatches a little bit though, just so I can cut them out and make them square and make them look nice. But I only have a certain amount of time on this video before it cuts out because I have limited. So I'm going to try to do some of the lighter ones. But so far you're getting an idea, hopefully dark right there. Then there's this one. We'd have to move it over there. So I would cut it out and kind of start rearranging them after I get a few swatches, just like you did with the grays. Should be making sense, mostly. It's very similar to what you already did with the black and white, but instead of just black and white, you're using color. So this is going to be interesting because you'll realize pretty soon, just like the black pigment, just a tiny bit of it with the red makes it almost black. Well, the same thing is going to be true of the red with the white. Just the tiniest amount of it will make it feel... Oh, i got to clean my brush out. You're going to want to make sure you clean your brushes out pretty well in between. Otherwise, you're going to mess up. I need some water. And some, you will mess up your, your colors pretty, well, pretty good. And if you start getting these things really messy in your palette, you're going to want to kind of take a moment and rinse it off a little bit or wipe some of the excess off there. But here we go. I have some already made up here. 
that's pretty a pinkish that from the red and the white I think it's going to be a couple steps up or one or two from the red pure red but not too much that's like a sort of some kind of uh, reference point that I'm making there so what I'm doing, I can rearrange them. I'm kind of thinking linearly, like where's the jump go? I could even write little notes on here and say, this is one up from black, that's one more. Then maybe this one, but it's not quite right. Then there's going to be a couple here. Then there's red. Then I'm like, okay, there's probably got to be at least one or two in between here. So I'll try to add a little more red to that and see what I can do right there. Now it's really good to use a um, palette knife because then you keep your clean, your colors clean. Um, not your colors, sorry, your, um, your paint, your red paint and your white paint and your black paint will keep them free of extra contamination, so to speak. If you use a palette knife, they're kind of a little bit, um, you know, an extra tool to buy. So I understand if you don't get it, but that's the kind of benefit of it. Okay, so I got something else here. I'm feeling pretty good about it. So that's kind of looking good. That's a nice little jump there. But I'm realizing now that I see it, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to have a couple more. I have one up here, seven, eight, and then there's going to be some down here. So this probably, there's actually still another one in between. Not quite enough of a jump. If I squint my eyes and look at like the value jump between them, I can see that this is pretty good, but there's not quite, there's probably something in between, so I'll do that. And then there's going to be definitely a couple more up here, and the really high key tinted ones with extra white in them. So let me try to get a couple of those, and we'll deal with this. But first let's deal with this one in between and see if we can make one that's a little darker still. We'll just add a little more red to it, and try it out. Not enough red still. There we go. Now we're getting there. You'll notice that if you get your brush, if you don't really mix it all the way with your brush, you'll have an uneven tone or color, I should say, not tone, um, because there's some up in the ferrule of the brush, there'll be extra red paint or something, so you need to be careful with that. Let's see what this one looks like. No, nope, not enough of a jump yet, so I'm going to add a little more red still. That white's pretty powerful with the red at a certain point. There's a, the white and the red are fairly powerful. If you add just a little red to the white, it'll definitely get pink, but at a certain point, you have to really add enough red to make a jump too. It kind of works both ways when you're getting close to the red. There you go. So that's looking pretty good to be a jump. Boom, 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 boom. So that's one, two, three, four, and then we have five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll have another one in between here, down here too. These ones are actually, now that I see it, they're looking way too similar. So we're actually going to say, nope, scrap that one, and I, I would make another one. Or actually what I'll say better is scrap this one because... This is a good jump and that's a good jump, but this one's kind of too close to that and not a good jump. So you would go one, two, three, like that, and just say, get rid of that one, okay? As a, hopefully that's making sense to you. Now let's try to make a really high key one. I'm gonna take some of this paint that I just made and mix it over here. The beautiful thing about this project with the texture sheets is that you don't have to worry about, once you make your texture sheets, you don't have to worry about matching it so much again because you're allowed to use uh, different colors in the project as long as each texture sheet's one color. So if you want it, if you mess, you know, if you need more of it, you just make an extra texture sheet using roughly the same recipe and it'll still work. So the black and white one was a little more challenging in that regard. This one should make it, that should be a little easier. So getting something pretty light. It's not quite light enough though. I'm going to use quite a lot of white paint. I'm going right here. So this kind of 
interestingly, also, I'm gonna, I want to see, this interestingly shows you how much variety you can get out of just one, hopefully it's coming into focus, sorry, I was adjusting, one paint color, in this case, cadmium red light, with white and black. You're getting a deep brown color, almost like burnt umber or raw umber. You're getting these really nice browns, obviously bright red, and then white, up to white with these like light pinks, orangey pink, orangey colors that are still red. Because the quality of the that red is it's a yellow, it's an orangish red, so you're getting a lot of pinky oranges, peaches, and if you made a painting with these, all of these colors only, you could have a pretty comprehensive feeling to it because you could use these dark, dark ones for shadow and like um, different types of silhouettes. If I use this for nature, I could use sunsets and and things like that on water. I'd have to add blue, of course, but then add foliage with a little green and the browns and the out of basically one blue, one yellow, one red. Um, in black and white, I could have a really, really complex painting and it would all make sense together because it's using the same triad of colors. But in this case, it's monochromatic. It would make really make a lot of sense because the whole painting would be all based off of one color plus black and white. So when you put them next to each other, in their organ, it will make it very organized in your design. And that's the whole point of this, so that you can um, have things that feel like they belong together because you thought about the colors you used in them. And this would apply to a lot of different types of things, digital things, um, anything you do with color paint, obviously, printmaking, all this stuff. If you think about the tone, the coolness and warmness of the color and how it lays together in the family of colors you use, your designs will be a lot more successful. So I'm going to need to finish up this project all the way. I'm not going to do every step of the way all the way till I get the exact 10. But what I will say to you is when you're doing this, you want to do the big, because I think it's pretty clear at this point, um, you want to do the big swatches so you can cut them out. And you want to start maybe thinking about numbering them from black to white. I'll do one being the next color from black. So I'll go like one, then down maybe two, maybe that's three, four, we said five here, six, maybe seven. So now I'm realizing that I have a couple more to do, three more to do. So, and I'm looking at this now and saying, oh, I have at least two more light ones up to white up here. I could do eight and nine. And now that I see these, I'm looking, I'm going one to two is a jump, three, two to three is a really big jump. So there might actually be, this might actually be four and I should get one in between there. So I'm looking at it and going, okay, I gotta arrange one through ten. If I wanted to at this point I could cut them out and arrange them. But if I go one, two, then this is a really big jump from two to three. That tells me that that's not the right three. There's a different three. Okay? Does that make sense what I'm doing? So then I'm labeling them. If I didn't like them I make another swatch. But I'm doing this uh, small so that you guys can see it all in one go on the camera because I have a limited an amount of space to show you on the camera, but when you're doing it, you want to make them bigger, you know, like inch by inch, so that you can cut them out and really um, have them even size. If you do them too small, if they're not big enough, you can't get them all the, can't get them even swatches that look nice. You don't want them to be messy. So we talked a lot about that with the black and white project. So I think you probably understand exactly what I'm saying. So that would be doing the color scale mixing the black and white with the color, the monochromatic color scale, which is a huge part of this because you need to learn how to mix color and deal with the color. It'll help you with the texture sheets and the composition overall. And you do this first, then the texture sheets at the same time as your design. If you have a good design and you know what colors you're going to do, it's going to help you pick the right colors to use on your texture sheet. So watch the texture sheet um, demonstration as well. Okay. Stay safe out there. Bye, guys.